if I were to do it now, I'd probably throw a little liner over that lip, but <laughs> you know, then and now. Lady Marmalade, Christina Aguilera, Lil' Kim, Maya, and Pink. 2001, directed by Paul Hunter. Oh, I mean, ultimate girl power. It was a moment where I got to collaborate and be around other strong powerhouse female energy, which was incredible. Sometimes when you're a solo artist, sometimes it's so isolating. And sometimes it's just like, I would look at like bands and groups and be like, oh, that camaraderie must feel so good to be in it together. I got to experience a taste of that with this, I mean, such an incredibly talented group of girls who just absolutely slayed. I loved how Trish Somerville actually styled all of us and put the thread together between all of us girls. She just did such an amazing job of allowing us to all represent ourselves uniquely, but we all individually had this common sense of unity within our wardrobe, and we got to play dress up, which is my ultimate favorite. You know, it's funny, I had the inspiration that just came together with that hair was I actually actually had my hair braided and we just started unraveling and taking it out and I was just like, I love how big it looks, let's keep it this way. And so we just kind of like went with it. <laughs> we weren't even thinking about like this on that, on that, on this. <laughs> so we were giving the full nine yards. It's a classic song, first of all, having Missy Elliott come aboard, producing it, giving the track like this freshness. I was told on my first record so many times, you can't sing like that. You have to hold back. It's not okay to ad lib like that, to do runs like that, to slide into vocals. I was so micromanaged as to what I could do on that first album. This was a full circle moment of not only the look and visual, but also, yes, getting to vocally just give um, and play. I remember specifically for this look, I had begun working with Joanne Gare, who is epic, incredible, legend. Her looks that she had created also with Madonna and so many epic, amazing, incredible women. And also just the fact that she blew out, you know, the red and pink on the cheeks. She smoked out the eyes. She literally put individual little crystallization on the eyelid, um, creating the mold. The way that she blackened some of the outline, gave red inside. I mean, she really painted such a good fashion editorial face. That was so creative and I was just living for it. There was no telling me I couldn't do something <laughs> big and just add it to the face. But but yeah, that's where the eyebrows came into play. That's when they started coming out. The first time I actually had a nose ring in the video, like she was starting to transform from the first record to what would eventually um, become stripped. Dirty. Featuring Redman 2002, directed by David LaChapelle, album stripped. Woo, she was ready. <laughs> She was ready. Ex Tina. Yeah, Christina got to birth Ex Tina. Ex Tina was a name actually my AR guy at the time had um, given me. It was just kind of like a funny, he's like, your name is so long. Let's just call you Ex Tina. And you know, like Xmas, Ex Tina. So I was like, okay, I like it. You know, there was like this pop facade that you had to fit a certain way of being and acting and and I was just anti that and I just wanted to rebel against anything people thought was safe and pretty and perfect and clean so I went dirty you know I wanted to embrace my sexuality but on my terms and in a way that I felt comfortable like I grew up listening to these guys ideals of like perfect this or perfect that like I was like anti that I'm going to be gritty I'm not going to be your dream girl if anything I want to be a nightmare but I also 
<laughs> I want to have my own feel and vibe, and I don't care if it fits your standards or not. David LaChapelle definitely helped create this world of just imagination and fun. It was like this underground, anything goes kind of, you know, random character world. You had plushies, you had motocross, you know, putting the Xtina helmet on initially when you first see the video and I'm getting on the bike and then in the boxing ring. I mean, all of it are encompassing of, I think, my wanting personal freedom. I wasn't trying to think too hard about this. It was just like, you know, let's throw some black in it, like rough it up, let's make it fun. Definitely wanted to rough it up and it's so funny, like, I didn't even think about it at the time, but now I hear people talk about like the super thin eyebrows. Like I wasn't even thinking that at the time. Like smudgy eye, yes, I love kind of the dewy, wet eye makeup. Hmm, if I were to do it now, I'd probably throw a little liner over that lip, but <laughs> you know, then and now. Um, no, but it was, it was classic. And you know, you don't wanna just change something that just felt that organic. Decades later, I see this coming back and being referenced. So it is refreshing and a beautiful thing when I get to see these girls, Kylie Jenner, Miley Cyrus, representing it on their own for themselves. And honestly, it's nice too, because when you're going through it, and at the time, these things were a little unheard of to be that, you know. I mean, I really like, put it out there, trying to defend double standards and women and allowing women to have the right to feel sexual without feeling degraded. I took the hit, so it's a beautiful thing when I definitely get to see it years later being celebrated the way it is and makes me feel like, yes, it was worth it. I am beautiful, no matter what they say. Beautiful, 2002, directed by Jonas Ackerland, album Strip. Well, for this particular song, I think that this was probably the most accurate depiction of stripped for me and what it meant. It really was about minimalism. Uh, it stripped down, no fancy clothes. It was a tank top and some pants and makeup super minimal. I wrote stripped to be a reflection of just stripping it down to who I was and how I felt, good, bad, ugly, not so pretty over the top, whatever it was, it was parts of me being a woman and being stripped of any outside opinion or standard of something I felt I had to be forced to be. So this was, in essence, stripping it down. I definitely loved how Jonas captured the raw and gritty feel of um, embracing that it's okay to own your insecurities and feel empowered by them. Don't look at me was something I was literally telling someone just don't because I felt really insecure and shy at the moment before getting into my headspace to sing the song. And, um, and she kept it. I know Linda, I've heard her tell that story before too, from her perspective, she's so funny. But it makes 100% sense because it really does embody like who I am too. Like even though I, I have a very big persona on stage, I do like to keep things pretty low key. <laughs> you know, sort of, you know, have my own little weird shy world. But so many years later, I can look back and be so proud that it represented so many things to people that come up and tell me stories now. And it saved their life too, that meant a lot to me. And it was the first time I felt seen or, or those are the stories that, you know, that's what I do it for. The awards are beautiful and they're much appreciated and I'm grateful, but it's the storytelling and the connection with people that truly just I could cry thinking about it. <laughs> it just, it means the most. Me Fighter, 2003, directed by Floria Sigismondi, album Strip. I think goth and, you know, everything that is represented in, in darkness, I think it is so beautiful and so it actually looks very light to me. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem that way, but, you know, and then you have the transition from, you know, this broken sort of, you know, moth into this beautiful butterfly. And, you know, it's so interesting. And my goal is never to, you know, try and be super straightforward and on the nose. I wanted to always give, and this was the start of that with the stripped album, giving it that, you know, creative twist that makes you look a little bit deeper than just the surface and creating things that actually have that subliminal message. Peter Savick and Joanne, again, really just came through. I mean, they are such artists within themselves. They would present, yes, a lot of fashion references that I just, 
fell in love with and was like, yes, do it. I mean, my thing was like, let's go for it. Let's be weird, let's be creative, let's have fun with this. You know, you know, being weird is is and different is super fun for me. Do you have a favorite look from this music video? I think this one was my favorite, to be honest. I think it was just such a beautiful visual between, you know, the butterflies and just like the fragmented dress and the distress on it and the hair was super fun. It was like cotton candy. It was just a really, really uh, fun moment. And I also loved the hair in the scene with the striped leggings when I kicked the camera at the end. I still have that piece of hair, actually. Candyman, 2007, directed by Matthew Ralston, co-directed by Christina Aguilera, album Back to Basics. Musically and visually, I this whole Back to Basics album for me, an era in my life, was a throwback to things that inspired me in both regards. So you had old Hollywood film and then the music of that time too, which was rooted in, you know, soul and jazz and blues elements that you'll hear all throughout that record. But Candyman in particular was a reference to my love of the Andrews Sisters, three-part harmony all the way through the song. And we brought it to life with with uh, referencing myself as three different sisters with different colored hair. And no, that was not CGI. I literally went and changed for every single wig and look in this video. It's <laughs> from the blonde to the red to the brunette. I think we came up with a funny name for each of them on set that day, <laughs> the different girls, which I don't remember now. But yeah, it was super, super fun. But I'm, su I'm a blonde at heart. I definitely enjoyed being blonde the most. Matthew was just such a pro at that. He really loved attention to detail, especially within that era. He really got it. He got the concept. He got the creative I was looking for and really, you know, brought it home for me. Peter Savick, of course, um, came in hot for Back to Basics. He was always so great at transitioning creatively. The concept that I was going for, whether it be the black and blonde braid moment and understanding you know, how to represent that to the sleek um, old Hollywood glam style. He truly was such a genius at that. He loved it. He would always be sending me old Hollywood glam references and he definitely was a part of the, the heart and soul of that era. I have always been a latex girl. I know it's really worn now. <laughs> like, I'm so Still loving latex. You know, I will always love latex. The blue outfit, the sailor outfit, that one at the end, that was completely made out of latex from top to bottom, from the hat to the belt to the bow and all of that. But yes, she loved a latex moment and still does. Pa mis muchachas, 2021, Christina Aguilera, Becky G, Nikki Nicole, featuring Nati Peluso. Famis Muchachas is an anthem, I think, for women supporting other strong women and coming together as this force to be reckoned with. Becky G, Nikki Nicole, Nati Peluso, they're all three such powerhouses on their own. I think we wanted to be boss women, you know? We wanted to own and, and have the strength and we sort of wanted to represent this moody sort of underground world. So of course, different takes on black and sleek leathers and lace and shades. Whenever I did my first Spanish album, Mi Reflejo, back when I was still baby Christina coming off the first album, I had streaks of red in my hair. That was before I went to black, but I had the streaks of red in my hair. So this one, I think we wanted to really change it up and pay homage to that and that era for me and that it was like the first um, thing I did to explore my roots and we did red so we brought it back full on red for uh, La Fuerza. Jesus did epic hair and brought back so many refreshing looks and interesting takes on the red and personal amazing dear friend of mine now over the years Fighter. Etienne Ortega did such incredible makeup on this particular video, but he he consistently just kills it. You know, the the me that I am now is in spirit, you know, because of of the passion he puts in the makeup for me. So thanks to him, I feel like I can come alive <laughs> on camera. <laughs> I was asked so many times to change my name and um, from from personal uh, things that were happening with family. It always just did not sit well with me. I did not feel okay 
changing it or becoming some random made up word. I wanted to be who I was and that's Aguilera. It's always been who I was. It, you know, it's a part of my roots and my background and, and, and a part of who I am. So I never wanted to shy away from that. Even if it was hard for people to pronounce. Coming up, I definitely stuck to my guns and did not want to change who I am. Thank you so much, Allure. Thank you for taking me down memory lane. I had such a blast getting to tell the stories and reliving such incredible moments in my life. Mwah.